we are at the dawn of a new era. In the past, the space race was a competition between governments. But the 21st century is presenting something completely different, as some of the world's wealthiest individuals have joined the space race. In what has been dubbed the billionaire space race, we see Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson, and Elon Musk on a mission to make suborbital spaceflights a thing, or in Elon Musk's case, a mission to colonize Mars. Through their companies, Bezos Blue Origin, Branson's Virgin Galactic, and Musk SpaceX, these billionaires are attempting to change the world by creating a path that will lead to more and more civilians going on adventures to a place that only a select few in the history of the world have ever seen. So, who is leading the pack in the billionaire space race? Join us as we unpack all the details of this game-changing race. Welcome to Posh Future. In this video, we're going to be exploring all the details of the billionaire space race and the three major companies involved. Please hit the subscribe button and keep watching to find out all you need to know about it. On July 11, 2021, Richard Branson and Virgin Galactic made a successful mission to the edge of space. About nine days later, Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin also made their first successful mission to the edge of space. Now, there are arguments as to what constitutes as the edge of space, but we'll get to that in a moment. What is important to note here is that these flights have marked ground milestones in the space race, and we're watching history being made as we're at the start of what seems to be an avenue for space tourism. Now, while Elon Musk and SpaceX haven't sent civilians to space yet, they have made a lot of giant strides in the space industry. In 2008, SpaceX was successful in sending the first privately funded liquid propellant rocket Falcon 1 to space. It was also the first private company to successfully launch, orbit and recover a spacecraft. This was the Dragon 1 in 2010. And in 2012, it succeeded in sending the Dragon C2 Plus spacecraft to the International Space Station to deliver cargo, making it the first private company to do so. In 2020, it was the first private company to send astronauts to orbit and to the International Space Station. This was aboard the Dragon Demo 2. So, there has been a lot of milestones that these companies have marked. But how did we get here? Let's take a walk down memory lane, shall we? One can trace the foundation and groundwork for private space flight and the billionaire space race to a man named Peter H. Diamandis, a Greek-American engineer, physicist, and entrepreneur. With a passion in making a difference in space, he founded the Students for the Exploration and Development of Space, SED, in the 80s. In the 90s, he was disappointed with the state of space development and decided to do something about it by creating the X Prize. This was done with the aim of spurring the suborbital space tourism. Pause. What is suborbital space flight? Suborbital space flight simply means that the space flight does not reach orbit. The rockets that take this flight aren't built to reach orbit. They are built for the purpose of space tourism. Now, they do go to space, but they just don't reach orbit. Now, what or whom exactly decides that a rocket has gone to space? Well, there is something called the Kármán line. It is named after Hungarian-American physicist and engineer Theodor von Kármán, and it determines the boundary between the Earth's atmosphere and outer space. Now, the issue of where the line actually starts is subjective. According to the Fédération Aeronautique Internationale FAI, which is the international record-keeping body for aeronautics, defines the Kármán line as 100 meters, which is 62 miles or 330,000 feet above the Earth's sea level. Various countries and bodies define space boundary differently, but the UN accepts the FAI's definition. 
Meanwhile, the United States and NASA defined space boundary at 80 kilometers above sea level. The reason for this is mostly because putting it at 100 kilometers would complicate matters regarding US surveillance aircraft and reconnaissance satellites. Now that you have an understanding of what suborbital spaceflight is, let's examine each of the private companies that are in the billionaire space race. Let's begin with Blue Origin. Founder and executive chairman of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, ventured into the space industry in 2000 when he founded Blue Origin. Its mission is to increase access to space through the use of reusable rockets. As at 2005, Bezos was already discussing plans for takeoff and landing of spaceship New Shepard, named after the first American in space, Alan Shepard. Starting from 2015, New Shepard completed about 12 test flights, and while it was initially scheduled to fly in 2018, it was able to complete its first successful mission in July 20, 2021. Aboard the suborbital space flight was founder Jeff Bezos, his brother Mark Bezos, pilot and a part of the Mercury 13 Wally Funk, and Dutch student Oliver Damon. One of the seats on the flight had initially been won at a Blue Origin auction for $28 million, but the anonymous winner didn't end up being a part of the flight due to scheduling conflicts. The flight took 10 minutes and reached speeds of 3,595 kilometers or 2,233 miles per hour, and it exceeded the common line of 100 kilometers as set by the FAI. The New Shepard was the first human spaceflight from the state of Texas. Wally Funk at age 82 and Oliver Damon at 18 years became the oldest and youngest people respectively to be in space. Blue Origin is currently working on a 7-meter, two-stage orbital vehicle called New Glenn that is expected to launch in 2022. Blue Origin reportedly spends billion dollars a year on its space activities. Moving on to Virgin Galactic, Richard Branson, known as the founder of the Virgin Group and Virgin Atlantic, founded the spaceflight company Virgin Galactic in 2004. The company develops commercial spacecraft with the goal of providing suborbital space flights to space tourists. Initially, Virgin Galactic planned to take its first flight in 2010. However, this was delayed for a lot of reasons including the October 2014 crash of VSS Enterprise. During an experimental space flight operated by Virgin Galactic, the space plane broke, killing co-pilot Michael Asbury and leaving pilot Peter Sabord seriously injured. However, in December 2018, a spacecraft was able to take its first successful suborbital space flight. Aboard the flight was pilot Mark P. Stockey and co-pilot Frederick W. C. J. Stockow. The flight was able to reach an altitude of 82.7 kilometers above sea level. And while it falls short of the common line, it surpasses the United States definition of space boundary. A successful flight was also carried out on July 11, 2021. And aboard the flight was Richard Branson and three employees, Beth Moses, Colin Bennett and Sirisha Bandla. The flight was piloted by Dave McKay and Michael Masucci. Plans are underway to begin paid passenger space flight by 2022. Now finally we move on to SpaceX. Founded in 2002 by Elon Musk, SpaceX mission is to colonize Mars. Elon Musk wants to make us a multi-planetary species by making Mars a more habitable place to live. As we had earlier mentioned, SpaceX has made a lot of strides in the space industry. Since June 2010, SpaceX has launched up to 126 flights from the Falcon 9 series of rockets, with 124 of those flights being successful. It is currently developing Starship, whose goal is to not only go to Mars, but re-enter the Earth's orbit and be able to be reused up to a thousand times. SpaceX has also launched an all-civilian mission to orbit by the end of the year. Passengers will get the opportunity to orbit the planet for up to four days before returning to Earth. 
Founder of Shift Ford, Jared Isaacman, has paid for all four crew seats. Two of those seats have been donated to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. So it is clear that all these companies have marked a lot of milestones in the space race. But the question remains on who is currently leading the race. Well, it depends on who you ask. Some will say Richard Branson, as he is the first private individual to send himself to space. However, many will also say Elon Musk. This is because not only has Musk, through SpaceX, shown itself to be capable of sending cargo into space, it has also sent astronauts into space. The company is also seen as constantly being a pioneer in the space industry, and right now, the company has been picked by NASA to carry the next two Americans to the moon. Regardless of who is winning, it is interesting to see that what might have been deemed a thing of sci-fi movies becomes more real before our eyes. And we continue to watch these companies to see what next they will do. That's all we have for you today. Who do you think is winning the billionaire space race? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Did you enjoy the video? If you did, please give the big thumbs up and turn on your post notification bell so you know when we come out with new videos. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you would like to see more of our content. Till next time, bye.